Hi, in this video we are going to learn about Venn diagrams. Venn diagram is nothing but the pictorial representation of sets. And Venn diagram actually help a lot in understanding the concepts of set. So as you know, in sets we have one universal set which we usually represent as U or Mu or sometimes it is also represented as Psi. The universal set in Venn diagrams is represented as a rectangle and all the other sets which we draw from this universal set are represented as circles. Right? So suppose if we have a set A which is a subset of universal set and if we have set B which is a subset of universal set both of these sets will be represented as circles. Of course, we have to draw different circles or separate circles to represent both the sets. Let's take a few examples and try to understand it better. So suppose if we have one universal set here, the universal set is represented as U and the elements of the universal set are the numbers from 1 to 15. And I have also defined two subsets of this universal set. They are set A and set B. Set A has elements 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And the elements of set B are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 12 and 15. So these are the two sets which are drawn from the universal set which we have defined. Now, how do we represent this in Venn diagram? So to represent the universal set, first we have to draw a rectangle. Universal set is represented by rectangle, right? So suppose this is the universal set and I have to write the name of the universal set here inside the rectangle and in the top left corner I have written name of the set which is capital U right and here you can write all these elements of the universal set inside set but in this Venn diagram we have to represent set A and set B also. First I represent set A and set B. And as you can see, we have few common elements over here. Here we have these elements 4, 6, 7 and 9, which are common in both the sets, right? That means set A and B will have some overlapping area. Why? Because in any set, the elements can be written only once and so is the case with the universal set. You'll understand it better. Let me draw the circles for these set A and B. So suppose these are the circles for set A and set B. Here I am representing set A in purple and set B in green. Right? And now I'll fill the elements of all these sets. First I'll fill all the common elements in this overlapping area. So I'll write 4 which is common to both set A and B. Then I'll write 1, 6 and I'll write 1, 7 and 9. These four elements are common to both set A and B. So they have to lie in both the circles, right? But at the same time, in the universal set, they cannot be repeated. So that is why I am writing all these common elements in this overlapping area and then I'll fill the rest of the area which belongs to set A or the area inside this purple circle with rest of the elements. So 1, 2 and 8. These are the elements which are not common with set B but they are there in set A. So I have to write these elements over here. And same will be repeated for set B. For set B, I have to write this 3, 5, 12 and 15. So this 3, 5, 12 and 15 will come inside this green circle but outside the common area because this common area represents the elements which are there in both set A and B. I have represented set A and set B. And what about this universal set? Yes, there are lots of elements in the universal set which are not represented here. So first we'll check which all are the elements which we have already represented in these sets. So one I have represented, two is there in set A, three is there in set B, four is there in both the sets, five is there in set B, six is there in both the sets, seven is there in both the sets, eight is there in set A. 9 is there in both the sets and 10 I have to represent so I'll write a 10 over here inside the universal set but outside the set A and set B. Similarly 11 also isn't represented anywhere so 11 will also come here. 
12 is inside set B. 13 is also not there in any of the sets, set A and B. So 13 will also come outside. Similarly, 14 will also come outside and I can write all these elements anywhere inside this rectangle but they have to be outside the circles which represent set A and set B. So this is the pictorial representation of sets and we call it Venn diagrams right and this is when we have few common elements among the two sets. Now what if we don't have any common elements like if we have two sets A and B like this Set A has numbers from 1 to 7 and set B have numbers from 10 till 15. We don't have any numbers common between these two sets or any elements common in between these two sets. Then how to represent these sets using Venn diagram? Of course universal set will be a rectangle and these two sets A and B don't have any elements in common so they will be called disjoint sets and they will be represented by two circles which don't have any overlapping area like this. Here this purple circle will represent set A and this green circle will represent set B. Right? And how do we represent the elements? The elements of set A are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 and the elements of set B are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 and rest of the elements which are there in universal set but don't belong to either A or B will be represented outside these circles and those elements are 8, 9 and 10. You can represent rest of the elements anywhere but inside the boundaries of the rectangle. So this is how we represent the disjoint set. Right? Then here arise one question. Can you draw overlapping circles for these two sets? Yes, you can draw but there will not be even a single element in that overlapping area. But it is always better to represent disjoint sets in two separate circles which don't have any overlapping area. So this is how we represent Venn diagram and in next few videos we are going to learn about union, intersection and then we are going to learn about the subtraction or the difference of two sets and symmetric difference. Difference and symmetric difference are the two very interesting topics and of course we are also going to learn the significance, the practical significance of set theory. Right? So keep watching MathSmart and bye bye till then.